So I'm just filming some lessons for sax school today. This is interesting though, I just got a message from one of my sax school students and they're asking about the transition between C and D. And if you're a beginner player, there's a good chance that you've struggled with that transition as well. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna tell you a couple of tips on how to fix that transition C to D. Here, let me pull you over here. Now, if you're a beginner player, if you're just getting started, then there's a good chance that you're having a trouble with this transition as well. And uh, it's good to talk about these sort of things because sometimes it can be so frustrating when you're at home and you come across an issue like that where you just can't get a note out. Pulling your hair out, you don't know what to do. So let's see if we can fix this problem for you. Now, this question was from David. He's one of the sax school students. And actually, if you've not checked out sax school, so I run sax school, which is a huge community of online uh, online community for saxophone learners. So there's thousands, about 7,000 people now using lessons of one form or another from sax school. And we've got a very active community of learners all over the world learning saxophone from getting started right through to um, advanced skills like improvising and altissimo and overtones and all sorts of stuff. Loads of courses and loads of individual lessons that you can explore. That's at mcgillmusic.com and there's a 30 day trial if you want to check that out. But this lesson is from David who's a, a sax school member. And David's saying, I've been trying to learn the sax for a month or two, but at the moment I'm having real problems going from C to D with the octave key and back again. D sounds very thin by comparison to the other notes and I often get a lot of squeaking and high notes. Um, C to E and back and C to F is fine. Uh, am I doing something wrong? Good question. Okay, so look, the way I, th I think about this is there's really two, two main things that are common problems with this transition from C to D. So the first one is um, is something that is easy to miss, particularly if you're a pretty new to playing, if you're a new sort of beginner player. And it's got to do with our fingers. So when we're going from C here to D with all six fingers down, a really common thing that happens is our ring fingers let us down, these ones here. I think they're the least coordinated fingers on our hand. And often when we're going from C to D, where we've got those three, those three, and our octave key to think about. There's lots of stuff to think about in there. And what can happen is the coordination between our fingers isn't always correct. And particularly the ring finger here, this G ring finger, left hand, it can be forgotten about. So often it comes down late or it doesn't go all the way down. So that's something to think about. Easy to fix though. What you gotta do really is get yourself a mirror and practice playing in front of your mirror. Just watch yourself, watch your fingers. You can check out your hair and how good you look too. But most importantly, I want you to think about your fingers. So watch those fingers. And what you're looking for here is to make sure that when you go from C to D, that all these fingers are moving in unison. They're all coordinated. It's a common problem. It sounds really obvious, like, Nigel, why are you telling me this for? But there's a lot of people that miss that, so it's worth checking out. Now, if you're a more advanced player, or even a, you know, you're out gigging, then these sorts of things are often problems as well. It may not be for the transition C to D, but you might find that there's glitches in your playing um, where you, there's a little lumpy, uh, lumpiness in your melodic lines when you're improvising or when you're playing a classical piece. And often this is for the same reason. It's about your fingers not coordinating correctly. So it's worthwhile for a player at any level to spend some time watching themselves in the mirror and making sure that their fingers actually move together. So there's two things you're looking for, that your fingers, fingers move together, and also that your fingers are super close to those keys. And in an ideal world, your fingers should be touching those keys all the time. Almost impossible to do, but if you can pull it off, man, you got fast fingers. It really, really works well. Poorly coordinated fingers, that's the number one cause for transition issues between C and D. Now the second issue that can happen is a mechanical issue on your saxophone. Now I've got some other videos on my channel here about uh, repair tips and I'll put a link to these above, but it might be worthwhile checking out those. If you're, if you're looking at your fingers, your fingers are fine, um, then it could be a mechanical issue. And there's a couple of different things that go on with the octave mechanism um, that, that can be relatively easy to fix or worth taking to a repairer. So I'll give you one other tip actually that is worth checking out before you resort to getting some repair work done in your saxophone, and that can be about your embouchure. So making sure that your your throat is very open when you're playing, so 
Think about how you are when you're yawning, when you wake up in the morning and everything's really open in here. It should always be like that when you're playing because that big open cavity means you're getting a lot of air out and you can get a lovely great big sound inside your saxophone. So making sure that that is right, making sure that you've got a nice uh, round support of the mouthpiece and that you know, you're not biting too hard. So making sure that your embouchure is correct and if you're already getting other notes out that are sounding good, then you just wanna make sure that you're getting that same shape for that as you are for this D. So provided you've got that right and your fingers are okay, then it could be a mechanical issue. Now a couple of, just give you one quick tip on the, to look for this. And this is the most common issue. Our octave mechanism at the top here uh, is that, that's the octave key that moves up and down when we push our octave key on here. You notice that when I put my G finger down, that it goes up and down, right? So when you've got your D fingers on, uh, you need to make sure that you've got the octave key on, but because you've got that G finger down, your octave key should be sitting down on the top of the neck here, okay? You don't want it to be up, you want it to be down. If it's not down, then you're gonna have an issue when you get to that D. So just check that out. If, if it doesn't look right to you, you might wanna get some advice on that. But anyway, I hope that helps you. I think when you're first getting started with saxophone, it's really important to try and overcome any little issues like this. If you've ever got a question, you can reach out to me through the channel or you know, ask somebody who knows about that stuff because I think the most important thing is to really get into the habit of practicing, having fun, playing some music and enjoying yourself. And that's really what sax school is all about. Um, so one other thing I would suggest uh, is to, apart from checking out those repair videos on my channel, if you want to find out a bit more about sax school, I've actually got a free saxophone toolkit uh, on my website. It's a bunch of lessons and resources that I make for free for everybody, and it's definitely worth grabbing. It'll give you a chance to check out a bit more about my lessons, but also there's some stuff in there that'll help you whether you're just getting started or want to learn about improvising or want to develop your tone, or also if you want to learn a bit more about I think one of the sort of secret ninja tips to being a, a really successful saxophone learner and that's understanding practice habits. So we've got some good stuff on practice habits in there. If you go to the website, I'll put a link up above here actually uh, for my saxophone toolkit. That's definitely worth it working out. Hey, if this has been helpful to you, let me know in a comment if you've had a problem like that or maybe if you've found a different way to resolve these issues or if there's something else that you're struggling with that you need to know about, let me know about that in a comment too because it helps me to make better videos for you guys. And if it's your first time here, make sure you subscribe so you'll find out about all the new videos that I'm putting out. I'm putting out stuff all the time on my channel here and I want to make sure you find out about them and you don't miss out on them. So anyway, that's it. I'm going to get busy making my videos today for Sax School. Have a great rest of your day. Keep practicing hard and I'll catch you on the next one.